finally, we're enjoying EWS once again. Oh, yes, and we dive into the tech of the first round of the EWS 2020. And it's not exactly what you would think. It's all coming mm. up on the Dirt Shed Show. <laughs> yes, welcome to the Dirt Shed Show this week with me, Martin Ashton, and... Me, Andrew Dodd. That mm. sounds weird. Dobby. Who am I kidding? <laughs> Mate, how are you? Yeah, really good, mate. It's been a while, that's for sure. You're a daddy, Doddy. I am, yeah. I'm, I'm officially daddy. In fact, did you see that picture? The, the Doddy Daddy Diddy Doddy shot? I did. Yeah, that's I pretty did. funny, isn't it? I love that. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Um, it's Thank you very much. Fabulous I could do news. some matchsticks to prop the old eyes open, but all good. <laughs> yeah, um, well, dude, right, I need you this week, so you're going to have to be sprightly because EWS has been... Um, back on our lives um thankfully um we've got a big couple of weeks happening just happened and happening where we're sandwiched in between the two final rounds of the reduced 2020 season but we've got some cool ews tech to talk about and who better than yourself to uh talk about this stuff yeah. with um dude i mean first up right the first bit of tech i want to talk to you about um because i'm sure you've got tons of stuff you want to highlight but what about these new ews number boards First off, it sounds boring, but it's not, is it? No. Do you know what? I think that's one of the best things anyone has done for a long time. We're talking about, essentially, some plastic that goes on your handlebars. Yeah. Now, for years, we've seen people cutting up and butchering number plates. There's been a massive inconsistency of the size of them yeah. as well. Um, so why not make it an integrated part of the bike, and why not make it do some cool things as well? And I think a massive shout out to the whole crew behind EWS for actually pushing this, because I think this is such a good idea. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, um, I, I actually saw this and I went straight onto the EWS website and, and bear this in mind, right, I've got connections. I didn't need to do this, but I saw it and was like, I'm having one of them. And I went and bought one immediately. No way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm, wait, I'm waiting for it to arrive. Um, I already ordered mine um, and I love it because it's going to look so cool on the front of the bike. But let's, let's think about it. It's reusable. It's recyclable, which is very important, um, which is a great thing to have because usually a plastic product um, is not a, not a um, great thing to have invented because <laughs> it's a lot of um, plastic about I've heard and yeah. what's really cool it's also got some cool details where it's got your medical info on the card so if a first responder gets to you there's things like your blood type and uh, maybe if you speak a different language all these little bits of info that means you're safer out on the trail as well as looking good 100 percent so yeah I, nice. I think that's that's ultimately the key. I mean, the way it looks is obviously a cool thing, but yeah, having the medical details in there, that's just like, again, why has no one done this sooner? Yeah, We've seen yeah. this creeping in with helmets, but it's not like, you know, it's not an across the board thing. So uh, yeah. bad pun there, but to have it on a number board makes perfect sense. You're yeah. in a race, so it's more likely that you're gonna have a tumble at some point. So yeah. hopefully it won't be that bad. You know, you're laying on the ground, you're unconscious. How do they know you've got an allergy? Look on the number plate. Oh, I love it. I love it. This is my kind of tech actually, because it's, it looks, I, I do like my bike to have something about it. And I can just imagine that sat on the front, but it being useful, more than useful. Bloody great, bloody great bit of tech that. Right, what about, um, let's get on some proper, like, I guess, you know, tech that you would expect. New bikes, okay, um, starting with the new Trek Slash. Okay, lower, um, longer, slacker, the usual updates um it's got no more knock block why has it got no more knock block i don't understand that do you know what i'm not sure why it hasn't but um it's probably thankful you didn't have it in a race like that because uh you don't want anything to be resistant how much steering capacity you're going to have when you tackle right. switchbacks like that That's... that race is notorious for i mean some of the races were actually properly struggling you're talking about the best of the best yeah now uh... if they're struggling to get around stuff you see him do like a endo turns, very trials based riding actually for enduro. Yeah, I liked it. I mean, that really sorts out um, the skills of the riders. You know, I mean, if they're going to, yeah. it's all well and good going fast, but can you go fast over that tight nedgery stuff? I guess enduro yeah. riders these days, though, dude, they can, they can do so much on the bike. Um, this bike it comes in carbon and alloy, and of course it's got riders like Florian Nikolai on it, Katie Winton, um, Pedro Burns. Um, great riders, great team. They're using it well in EWS this year, but uh, it's a great looking bike. Um, what about the new Rocky Mountain Altitude? That is also a great looking bike. 
Yeah, they've actually been teasing this one for a little while now, and uh, well, finally it's obviously available, and Jesse's been racing this thing. I'll tell you what, there's a guy who can get around those switchbacks. <laughs> uh, yeah. Definitely watch them, like, unbelievable. Mm. Uh, so good on the bike, but again, like all bike sizing, they're all getting longer, they're all getting lower, they're getting slacker, the reach is getting bigger per size. Uh, and they're also doing size-specific wheels, uh, wheel sizing on them. So the smaller bikes tend to have the 27.5 and the larger bikes tend to have the 29s. And there'll be a crossover size. It tends to be a medium on most brands. Yeah. And I think, you know, some people won't like the choice being made for them, but it enables them to dial in the bike based around those wheel sizes. So I think that's actually a really good approach to take. Definitely yeah. going to see that on a few more bikes that are being unveiled in the coming weeks. Yeah, it's interesting. I was, um, I was looking at the... Uh, Canyon Sender actually there's a video coming out of uh, Neil riding that bike and that that's one where I've really seen that grow into that you can now get it in the mullet but yeah um, you know just looking at how the wheel size is uh, there's so much more uh, options now because we were always looking at that point of how do we decide on the wheel size and it's sort of getting more and more to the point where we don't <laughs> don't yeah. decide you know we've got all options on the table I mean, I thought everyone kind of wanted to chuck their eggs in one basket and mm. jump to 29 in too much of a hurry. In fact, there was a lot of racers out there that did that and shouldn't have done and yeah. have since gone back. Um, at the end of the day, I don't think there is a size that is better and having choice is definitely a much better way of going about it. Yeah. You can pick and choose between them. And obviously the mixed wheel thing is kind of, I think it's really cool. Like, uh, it don't tend to work for me, but I could definitely see the benefit of someone wanted that big wheel at the front yeah. and something a bit stronger and more compact on the rear. Yeah, no, so it is great. And uh, like you say, seeing that bike with the options there based on the sizing is really cool. I mean, it must be working. Jesse Melamed absolutely smashed first round um, and took the win. Um, obviously got Remy Gorvan on that bike as well. Uh, ALN, Andrian Lanthia Nadeau, only known as ALN. Um, and Peter Ostrosko as well. Uh, mm. It's a great team. Um, I really like how they're building the the impetus on the teams in EWS. That's something yeah. that I really enjoy, actually. Um, I'm enjoying that side of things. Um, it's interesting seeing the, uh, the tyre development side of things as well. You know, for a while, everyone was just running the heaviest duty tyres possible. And now some racers are choosing slightly lighter tyres and using uh, going for the inserts. Yeah. We've obviously seen the inserts thing before, but it's definitely being used in a different way now. I think some people will may take them out during the race run to save a bit of weight, but they'll use them in practice to make sure they can sort of get adjusted yeah, to the yeah. bike in the terrain without necessarily destroying their bikes. Yeah, I mean, uh, I pretty guess... interesting. Yeah, I guess some of those riders are just taking that gamble, gamble on having the inserts in and just thinking, well, if I puncture, at least I can get to the end of the stage with yeah. not necessarily the greatest time, but it's not, it's not event over, you know, which, um, you know, in EWS, you know, you can be in that situation um, pretty easily, especially at that level. Obviously, we've seen the, um, the blossoming of e-bikes, I think, in this new EWS E-series, um, which I, I just thought went down an absolute storm in Zermatt, and I can't wait to see more of it. Um, and, and the power stage on those races, I think something that's going to get I think this is going to get big, you know. Power stages are going to be something we're going to... Racing uphill yeah. is, is about you know to get what? exciting. That appeals to me so much. Yeah. And, and, yeah. and I think, actually, this is the real... This is calling for e-bikes. This is yeah. what they've been warming up to. Yep. And I think if anyone out there that hadn't ridden an e-bike rode something like an EWS on an e-bike, you'd suddenly realise, like, it's not just about the assistance. You've got, yeah. you've got to muscle these really, they're much heavier bikes yeah. around those stages. You've got to manage your power as well. Okay, you can change batteries, but you've still got to manage how you use them. Yeah. And then, of course, you've got to get a bike around it, and arguably, you could damage more stuff on an e-bike because of the way that you can ride them and the weight of them. And then you've got the, the power stages. I just think that's the coolest thing ever. Yeah. A gnarly uphill attack. Yeah, bike, I love I Which you'd it. never consider. No. Unless you'll win Masters, of course. No, but I mean, the, it's what we all play out on an e on an e bike, isn't it? We all start yeah. going, well, what can I get up on it? And I mean, as, <laughs> yeah. a, as a trials yeah. rider, that's natural. Um, I'm looking at more things I can ride up on my bow head than I am ride down. I want to, like, can I get up there? And that's yeah. what I want to do because I want to use that, that technology of the bike to make it up the climb that otherwise would be impossible. Possible. Um, and in the power stages, we've seen this um, development in after only one round of the riders really trying to find what they can do to make the bike perform better up the hill. So they're lowering pressure in their suspension, in their tyres. Um, they're even doing this thing. I don't know about this. 
doddy, I don't know what you think about it, but they're, they're zip tying the fork down yeah. so that it's got a lower front end on the climb. But I, I think as a trials rider, that doesn't work for me. But what yeah, do you think sure. about that? Do you know what? This is a really interesting concept. Now, you've only got to go back a few years and see some of the things that RockShox were doing, like their two-step forks. Yeah. They did exactly this. Now, um, I probably wouldn't do this with cable ties. Um, I wouldn't waste them. I'd use uh, an old toe strap or something like that. Yeah. Now, I know that Steve Jones is against this concept, but actually I disagree with him, and I think that it's definitely got some merits for being able to alter the position on the bike. Because let's face it, all bikes are different. Everyone rides different size bikes. Yeah. And it's going to work for some people and it's not for others. Yeah, I guess that's yes, absolutely right. But I mean, as I guess I'm coming from the same angle as Steve as a trials rider. You are you should be using your body position to uh, to be able to make uh, those climbs possible. Um, and I tell you what I'm really interested in is all of those power stages. Um, you've got every rider sat down, getting the grip, pushing away and that that um, modification on suspension makes sense if you think like that. But I, yeah. ch I challenge you to think about this. Imagine Chris Ackrig riding up one of those power stages. <sighs> what body position would he be in? Would he be sat down? No. Nah. No. Nah. So there's tons going on in the EWS world of tech. Very different tech though. It wasn't what you were expecting, was it? Number plates, modifications, and new bikes. Can't well, get just think what's going to happen next time, Martin, when Bearing in mind that Neil's out there at the moment, Jonesy's out there, they're going to come back with all of the tech. Yes. So it's going to be, we're going to be inundated with the stuff over on Tech Channel, so you've got to tune in to check out that. Absolutely. Now remember, we're sandwiched in between these last two, se uh, two rounds of the season. Uh, it's all about to happen this weekend, so make sure you don't miss it on GMBN, obviously the home of EWS, which we're really, really happy about. So look forward to seeing how this series of 2020 holds up and finishes out this weekend. Exciting stuff. Right, Doddy, now I've got some bad news for you. Check this image out. Look at that. Ooh. Now. Oh. <laughs> oh man, this is sad. This is really sad. This is from Chris, okay? And it's his Trek okay. 9.9. He's over in yeah. California and he's, he's left me a note here. It says, uh, we've been looking at this jump for a long time. Um, my brother and my cousin barely cleared it, so why not? He gave it a go, brake checked, lost the speed. Oh, and look at what happened. Oh! Now, Doddy, talk me through this. We're just right, riding because, along. Yeah, because some, you know, you might look at this image and think, uh, wow, that was a rubbish bike. But no. I'm going to take a stab at what happened here. Yeah, go on. So, uh, okay, th this, um, sorry, Chris, but you can't blame the bike for this one. This is going to be all down to you. So have you ever seen how they take an axe and they cut wood? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's kind of like that. You've basically used the jump to As basically cut your bike in half. Yeah. yeah, the back of the jump, you've basically landed on it and it's just pulled the wheels apart. There's yeah. nothing on earth that's gonna survive that. Like Bikes are not designed for that, uh, no. unfortunately. But um, but still, it's pretty impressive. You managed to like snap a really good bike clean in half. Yeah, it's <laughs> unbelievable. It's actually very, very hard to do. Um, so yeah. here's what I'm suggesting. Um, this bike's going in the scrap bin. Now, if you've got um, a, an image or a video of you putting a bike through something that means it's now going in the scrap bin, then send it in to us. But what I want to see is not warranty issues, okay? I don't want to see any of that. I want to see genuine bike couldn't survive this stuff. Um, so send it in to us. Let's see what's killing bikes um, and uh, celebrate it rather than cry. Oh my God. Cry. <laughs> this is going to go off. I can feel this already. Don't blame it on the bike. Right, Doddy, what we got next? Uh, over to news, I believe, Martin. Let's do it. News from the Italian Riviera with Rick from the EWS. We had a pretty dramatic race yesterday. Similar conditions today, as you can see. Beautiful and sunny over there. Rain's coming in and we had a, a big storm just before the biggest stage of the race. Yeah, we had a big storm the night before, which actually I think might have helped the trails somewhat, even if it led to some set-up struggles. But as you say, for the Queen stage, the heavens opened, caught a lot of people out, people jumping backwards and forth then at the time check after that with set-ups, tyre changes, uh, definitely had a lot of drama. 
Martin Mays crashed actually on that uh, Queen stage, injured his hand, uh, had to pull out of the race. We don't know what the story is for this coming weekend, but obviously uh, as well, Robin Warner crashed out as well. Big crash for Robin, yeah, and I think um, he hit his head, he broke, he, he broke his rear mech. And he think, I think he just called it and said enough was enough. Mays, it will be interesting to see just what kind of form he turns up in Finale Liguria. But it also kind of feels very Martin Mays to say that, you know, write him off at your peril, I exactly guess. Exactly that. Uh, great weekend for the French. We saw Isabeau Cadure lose the, well, I say lose, she came second uh, to Melanie Pujan. And Mays arrived from her. Melanie Pujan, the winner of the first ever EWSE mm -hmm. back in Zermatt, jumps back on her enduro bike and absolutely just smashed the women's field. Isabeau with that ankle injury, some question marks about whether or not we'll see her racing in finale this weekend coming. But yeah, I mean, you have to go back to the last race of 2018 to find an EWS that Isabeau Cordurier didn't win. So that tells you how big a performance that was from Melanie. Yeah, and Adrian Day taking his first win in a couple of years. For Nikolai, new bike, uh, great result, second place. And Jack Moyer, another good ride from him. Yeah, a podium, I mean, I'm really, really, really positive, I think, just in terms of the EWS universe in general, positive podium. Adrian Day on the comeback trail from that, it was, I mean, it was downplayed at the time, but it really was nearly a career ending elbow injury. He's back, he's finally riding at the speed we've always known that he had in him. Florian Nikolai just softly, softly, quietly, quietly ticked off the stage results up in the second. Massive reward for Trek after putting a lot of faith in him. Then Jack Moyer, uh, only his second race as a full-time yeah, EWS impressive. pilot. And of course, got more action this weekend, so you can uh, get ready for the preview of the shakedown and that highlights video coming this weekend from just a few miles down the road. 2020 may not see the normal plethora of trade shows that we're used to, most notably Sea Otter not going on, which is something we all love to go to here at GMBN. But sadly, it was not to be this year due to obviously current circumstances. However, that didn't dampen the spirits or stop Sea Otter from doing something. Sea Otter Play was created, giving exhibitors, trade stands and everything in between the chance to show what they've got in a virtual world. Brands came together to show off their new products and new bits and pieces that are in the pipeline in, like I said, a virtual trade show and it looked great. So that's something really good and positive that we can take away that you know, people are still willing to put the time into just something a bit different. So that's cool. Well done to those guys there. Now, more racing news. The P to V Invitational took place at the weekend in the iconic venue of Leger. So more classic French racing on a classic French track, if you like. And it was a French one, two, three. There's a trend emerging here, I know. Loris Vergier took the win ahead of Benoit Collange and Loic Bruni had to settle for third place. I'm sure he'll be after more than that at the World Champs, no doubt. In the women's, there was only two women that took part. However, it was two of the fastest women in the world. Marine Cabaru just edging out Tracy Hanna by two seconds for the big W. Well done, everyone there. It was cool to see. And a noticeable mention, I saw Fabian Borrell even got back to racing there. So it's cool to see the old dog still having a whirl. Well done to him and well done to everyone for keeping the racing going. Lastly, but not leastly then, why not head on over to the GMBN shop where we've got a ton of fresh merch ready for you guys to have a little look at. And don't forget, if you buy any t-shirt, you get free sticker with it. So well worth heading over, gmbn.com. Go and have a little gander at the shop. But that's it for the news this week. Thank you very much, everybody. Back over to you guys. Hex and bodges, hex and bodges, hex and bodges, Donny, hex and bodges. Hacks and punches. Okay. Okay. I'm still doing Fair it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Still doing it. Yeah. Still doing it. Neil's still loving yeah, it a bit. Man, there's so many people <laughs> singing along. You guys are missing out. It's all of us together. You maybe, know? maybe next crew. time. Maybe next time. Maybe right, next let's time. get into Hacks and Bodges this week. All right. um, we're putting up a GMBN jersey up for wins, as usual. And our first hack this week is from Doddy. Who's it from? Uh, it's from Andy in Kent, UK. Um, oh, my nice. partner wanted some bags to put some of his bike packing kit in uh, to keep them clean, basically. So I upcycled my old waterproof jacket into a range of bags. No way. Dude, that's actually genius. That is oh, hundred. That is really, really cool. I've got loads of our waterproof jackets. I've got like tears in or whatever. I could probably do something like that. That is a yeah, blinding idea. Like, 
it looks like you need some serious sewing skills to do that. That's yeah. actually, I wouldn't actually be. A, I just end up with pieces of jacket, whereas that's that's ended up as actually like bona fide that's, items. That's really well made as well. Oh, yeah. I see. So they haven't put the zip on; they've just used the they've zip. They've reused the area that's got ah, the zip. Yeah, that's clever. Yeah, that's that is genius. Clever. Andy, like it, dude. I that's like amazing. That's a good yeah. one. That's a good one. Dolly's impressed. Yeah. Not a bad start well from Andy. Right, next up we've got Julian who's made oh, okay, a bike packing bag holder on the front of the bag, uh, the front of the handlebars. Oh neat, so put, yeah, like an extra stem on a mini set so of bars. Cut a, cut yeah. an existing stem down yeah. so that you can fit it in under a sort of higher steerer tube underneath the existing stem on the bike. Um, and then put some bars on that. Really simple idea, actually. That's really, really that's actually simple. really tidy. I like it. Kind of reminds me a little bit of um, our friends over on GTM. Where they've got their weird clip-on bars and all sorts yeah. of weird stuff going on there. Yeah, yeah it's cool. I, I actually quite like all that stuff, you know. Well, it I doesn't. Don't they don't always work. I had to fit a bike packing bag on my Canyon the other day, and I really yeah. struggled because of all my hoses and stuff at the front. So actually, yeah, yeah, it's that, difficult. That could have been a pretty good solution. Yeah, that's yeah, decent, I like that Julian. A lot. Good one, good one. Right, um, last up this week, we have got this, and Ryan's given us a little video, actually, a little video tour of this. This is Ryan's little workstation. Nice. Um, he's got his air pressure there on tap, and he's got basically this little swing-out pole that holds the bike as a bike stand, and you can just shut it all away neatly. Oh. And look at it. it takes up almost no space in the garage once he shuts those Mate, doors down that's and takes really, the pole away. Got to love a bit of OSB as well. Love the old sterling yeah. board. Yeah, that is nice. Is that what that's called, is it? Yeah, sterling board, yeah. It's that stuff that's just like mulched wood smashed together. That's, yeah, like my wall behind me, except I've painted mine with uh, masonry paint. Ah, nice. So it looks like a wall and not wood. Yeah, but actually the reason I painted it with masonry paint is because that's waterproof paint. So when I get oil and other stuff, I can literally just wipe it down. Oh man, you're a, bike, well. you're a bike cave genius. Um, yeah, um, and this is a geek. bike cave solution. Bike cave geek, yeah. yeah. Um, Doddy, it's not an easy week this week. We've got very different hacks and bodges to choose. I mean, they're all super hacks, really. There are no, no bodges in there this week. This is um, um, this is tricky. I, I, I really like what Julian's done. That is like, that's a genius hack, actually. I think that's really clever, and I think a lot of people mm. could use that if you're getting into bike packing. Yeah. But come so you're on. going with that one? No, do you know what? No. It's the waterproof jackets. I think that is just brilliant. No way. I, ge I genuinely Excellent. have got lots of old bits of clothing I've been keeping for something. I don't know what. Um, Here it is. This is it. Here it is. Yeah, this is great. There it is. Andy, you are a winner. Yes, you are getting a GMBN race top in the post. So be looking out for an email from us with details about that. Congratulations. Awesome. Yeah, well good. Um, very cool. Right, now stick with us because we've still got your bike vault. Did your bike make it this week? We've got what happened next, caption contest, and what's coming up on the channel. But first of all, we need to get our teeth into some sends and some fails. Doddy, yep. hold on tight, man. This is going to be a hell of a ride. Yeah, send it. Here we here we go.
Right, it's time for caption contest. Um, Doddy, look at last week's photo. Um, this is not the best image of Rick. Of Rick. Rich, <laughs> sorry. Um, he's, uh, yeah, he's got a certain look on his face there. But we're starting off with our first <laughs> caption this weekend. Um, this is from Cornish Cactus, a regular great caption, great caption uh, provider. And he says, when you get back to the car and realise you forgot to push record. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's good, that's good but I've got to say it's not as good as what Cosmos has put. Uh, <laughs> management has decided that you're going to be moving over to GCN. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah, that's, that's, a bit, that's a bit too true for comfort. That's a slap in um, the face, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Um, although, to be honest, I can't. I feels like that would be a um, promotion. <laughs> well, I don't think I've got any promotions coming anytime soon. Um, next up is from Shem Shem, and he says, Me trying to figure out what the hell the trick is that Amelia Hansen is pulling out of the bag at Audi 9s. Oh, man. That, yeah. goes, that goes for every trick I saw at Audi My 9s. My God. I, I'll oh. tell you what, Emil's run, like that run that's been doing the rounds, please tell me yeah. you've seen it, Martin. Oh, I've seen all of Audi 9s. Uh, with that it. drone following him, oh yeah. my God, it's yeah. bonkers. Absolutely yeah. ridiculous. Uh, Computer the, game level now, isn't it? Yeah, well, the imagery we're getting from these events now, uh, mainly because of FPV drones, are just giving mm. us such incredible angles as well. And the riders and the drone pilots are working together to really get those edits. Um, it's something spectacular to see. Uh, it's mm. very cool. It's very cool. Um, well, it's hard to pick a winner out of those ones. Um, there's some good ones there. Uh, what are you going to go with? I mean, you like that middle one, right? <laughs> it's, I always like slagging those boys off. Uh, yeah, okay. Else. They're we're friends, but um, it made me laugh. Yeah, let's go with that. Cosmos, you are a winner. Um, you, you have got yourself a GMBN flask. Nice job. Um, now, if you would like to enter the caption contest, here's your photo. Um, there you go. <laughs> Give us a caption for that this week um, in the comment section down below the video, and you could be playing along next week in the show yourself. Um, fingers crossed. Best of luck. Um, and now, something else I want to add this week is a new section I'd like to try and uh, create. So I've added a little uh, pot in the GMBN uploader. Now the link is on the screen and it is in the description down below. I want some what happened next videos because oh, I love yeah. those. I love those what happened next uh, games <laughs> online. So let's get some videos of what happened next that will be suitable for that if you've got one then drop it into the what happened next section of the GMBN uploader and we'll see what happens. It could be fun. We'll literally see what happens um, next week. It's going to be awesome. awesome. Can't wait to see what happens with that. Right, okay, Doddy, it is time to get into the bike vault for this week's show. I've been looking forward to this. Um, I've heard we've got some great bikes. Um, so first up in the bike vault this week, um, we have got an another Andrew. We've got Andrew from uh, Rotorua, New Zealand. Uh, yeah. This is his Zeroed Katipo. Um, I'm not familiar with this bike. I don't oh, know if yeah. you know this one. Oh. Yeah, well, it's got a pinion gearbox on it, Mark. It's got a 600% oh, range. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's basically witchcraft, is all you need to know. And <laughs> it, look at it, it doesn't have a derailleur. So, as much as I like derailleurs, yeah. bikes with no derailleurs really appeal to me because you're not going to break them. Oh, yeah, me too, me too. I mean, look how clean that looks at the back end. It, it just looks so neat. Can you imagine it? how quiet that thing is to ride as well? Oh my god, that's doing it for me. I mean, it's a just uh, you know 100 percent a super nice what what do you do though so you could technically break the rules on that and you could take a photo of that none drive side because technically hasn't got a drive side yeah missed an opportunity there dude andrew yeah. you could have turned it around do you know what <laughs> I, I've, I've got to ring the bell mark straight oh, out it. yeah that's do a super it. nice for sure that is a banger to start it's gonna be a tough week for everyone else right next up oh Ooh, nice so Tell this is a what? Stanton Switch 9 or FS uh, point oh. scathing loop uh, from another Andy. Um, weekend with mates away in South Snowdonia. Uh, original plan for March, but one of the first cancellations happened with lockdown. Only six months later, we, we arrived on Friday to ride up Cadet in gale conditions. Uh, yeah, dude, man. great, great picture, great bike. It's, yeah, uh, that's, tell you what. that's doing it. Cader Idris is not an easy climb. No. If you know what I mean? If that no. is not, that is not, I've walked up, well, not previous, not recently, but I have walked up Cader Idris. <laughs> and it is, it's quite a, it's quite a climb. Um, yeah, that's another super nice, dude. That's another yeah. super nice. 
For yeah. sure, ring that bell. Next up, oh my God, it's oh, a week no. of a... Oh, mate, come oh, on. No. Come no. on. <laughs> okay. This is Dan's Privateer 161 custom yep. build. Um, I say, he says here he's out enjoying the sunshine around Andover. 16-mile ride on my Privateer. Yeah. Um, it's... Uh, Built with uh, specs include uh, XX1 Eagle. It's got XS XS XS. Oh God, say it for me, Doddy. XS1 XS. X X one X X one Eagle <laughs> Access. <laughs> no, it's the X X bit. I can't say X X without saying X X. You've got, you got mixed in the X S, haven't you? It's X X one wow. Eagle Access. Um, right, the reverb axis and Spengel carbon wheels, which I'm sure is the bit Dolly's enjoying. <laughs> right, so no. th those privateer bikes are really good, and if you haven't heard of them out there, they're very progressive bikes. It's got really yeah, steep cool. seat angles on a very modern geometry, super good bike. In fact, you spent some serious cash on this, um, yeah. but I, I, I just can't, I can't get over the wheels. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just. I'm not even sorry. Uh, but you've got an awesome bike, and where you ride is really cool. Worth is near there. I just can't see past them. Sorry. That was the best. Oh, I just love. I just love. Um, I love opinions, man. I love it when. I love it when. You know. I mean. It's Look a bike at the length of that stem. Okay. <laughs> Wait. We haven't see got to it yet. <laughs> oh my god. It's so funny. Our um, next up is Mark's GT iDrive with the longest stem <laughs> in history. Look at the state of it. <laughs> You can't say that. <laughs> Look at the state of that stem. How big is Mark? He must be seven foot tall. Yeah, he must be it's a pretty crazy. big dude. So you probably shouldn't be slagging his bike off, to be fair. No, I probably shouldn't. I probably shouldn't. Sorry, I'm still, I'm still, uh, I'm buzzing off the Spengel wheels. Um, yeah, so we've got the GTI drive with a mega, I mean, it, no matter how tall you are, dude, that is a mega long stem and you're not going to get a super nice with a stem that long. No, it but it happen. is a 2001 GTI drive and back then they were amazing bikes. Yeah. They were so good. Yeah. Mate, yeah. short stem, you've got the super nice, I'm giving it to you, but you're not not today. I mean, wow. that stem's taking it away from me. Sorry, I've got I've got to have some kind of standards, man. And you, you can't put you I can't. I feel put like you've become on. like a little devil that's sitting on my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> you're encouraging me. I've known Doddy a long time and he knows how to get me giggling and messing around and I get in trouble then. Um so sorry Mark, it's a nice, it's definitely nice. It's definitely nice, but it's not super nice this week. Um, short stem, please. Uh, right, let's have a look at the next bike from Wilhelmer. That's a cool name. Wilhelmer, and it's, it's propane. Um, oh, this is... They're uh, nice, you know. I, I, I don't think I've seen many around. Um, not around our way. See them here and there. Pretty cool bikes, I think. Nice big yeah, coil shock on there. This is in Norway, it's on the Hillbilly Heaven ride. Um, he's riding alone on his brand new Enduro machine. Um, yeah, it's, not, it's nice. I don't know if I'm going to take it further than that. I do like them front mud guards. I do like those. I, I like guards. the whole thing, to be fair. I think they're really nice looking bikes. The suspension is supposed to be really good on those. It's nice. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I can't go more than nice. Can't go more nice. Not with what we started with this week. Um, next up, oh, ooh, yeah, look at this. Okay, so to some ooh. of you, you might overlook this. So this is from Charles, um, and it's a Mountain Goat Whiskey Town Racer. Uh, cool. So this is from North Carolina and USA. It's probably the coolest name of any mountain bike ever. <laughs> yeah. Challenge me, Mountain yeah, Goat is... Whiskey Town Racer. How cool is that? That alone cool. deserves it's... a super nice. I'll tell you what, right? If you draw a bike. That's what one looks like, you know. It looks, it just looks, you know, still good. That one you know for sure. It's nearly all black. If I had black cranks and black pedals, I'd be straight in with a super nice on that. Yeah, it is, it is a shame about the orange pedals, but um, and I don't say that about orange much, but it's super nice, mm. nevertheless. And the best name um, of all time. Absolutely, I agree with you there. Um, I am not familiar with this bike. This um, is an no. FRM. I'm not familiar with it either, no. Um, so it's from William, it's an FRM 10HP XC in Singapore. A quick and fast nice Italian bike used for Grand Fondo on-road and epic yeah. trails off-road. So it's obviously a bit of a lightweight. No, I totally have not seen one of these before. Yeah, it's cool. It's, it's not really bad. Cool. Bottom bracket looks a bit high though, but it looks quite um, nice. Um, hey, good spot there. It is very high, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. It's nice, it's nice. Definitely a nice bike. Let's clean, um, I bet it's light. Mm. There you go, only uh, weighs 10 kilos, flipping heck. <laughs> 
It is nice light, yeah. Um, it's a nice lightweight. Um, next up, we've got Cody's Pipe Dream Full Moxie. Oh. Uh, like this one a lot. This oh. is an Irvine yeah, Regional I'm liking Park. that. Oh, Doddy's loving it. What a color! It. <sighs> yeah, it's is got it, some is pop. it pink or is it just the way it looks in this picture? If it, I mean, either way, I love the way it looks. It's also awesome. a brand new set I, of Zeb forks on there as well. Oh. Yeah, and he's he's matched it. That 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 pink and the pinky purple mix, mixing with that blue is really Whoa. nice. Yeah, that's a super nice, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's almost got the those two colours melding have almost got that eight pack paint feel, you know? Yeah. Yeah, very nice. Um that's super nice for me. Yeah, definitely. Super nice. Um next up we've got <laughs> Wow, that's Look a at this. bike. Tom's Hope HB211. Yeah. Oh man, this is, oh it's a prototype too, this one. Um, that is sick. <laughs> I have got nothing bad to say That's about a nice this bit bike. of golden hour as well, the nice sort of oh. orangey glow on the bike and on the clouds, as you can see. It's really nice, right. isn't it? it? I mean, the bike's for, beautiful. It speaks for itself, and I think I can see, actually, um, sewed into the grass there, super nice. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's, oh, it's but can, can I just remind you that it's not drive side out, Martin? Oh, and I tell you what, droppers down. You've just got Sorry. distracted by the fact the bike is stunning. Sorry, I'm taking the super standards. nice back. I'm taking the super nice back. It's yeah. just nice. Oh man, Duh, so close it? though. So close. Who ever thought it? Um, and last up, oh my god. Wow, what is this? HB Velotechnic Scorpion. There is a name. Ooh, this uh, is from another in Australia. Another Andrew, another yeah. Andrew. Oh man, I don't know what to think about this thing. It's, it's weird. I don't know, I don't know what I think about recumbents. I mean, yeah. I've done a lot of hand cycling and yeah. honestly, right, I've put a lot of time into them and you, I do feel like an idiot when I'm riding it. Yeah. I do. Because you're down in this weird riding position. I actually rode past the seafront the other day um, and people were laughing. <laughs> they were laughing, like, ha, ah, look at that. I don't I think they were mine. I I, I, no, I but promise, this one's not a hand cycle promise, though, it's just a recumbent. Well, that's we haven't even got a good excuse. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. My days. No. no, no Martin, no, what has happened to you this week? The recumbent <laughs> is not for me, okay? So Andrew, I can only say it's very nice. But Do you I know can't what? go more I, than that. I might go a step further because I think it, I dare. think it's really cool. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. You, that'll be sacrilege. What are you going to do about it? I can't Super do nice. about it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, Martin's that, so going to get me for that later. <laughs> on that bombshell, we're out of the bike yeah. vault. Hey, that was um, awesome. Uh, that was a wicked selection. Yeah. Loved it. That was good. That was good. Um, Claudio, the living algorithm, put those together and uh, yeah, he's done a great job. Love I, I, I do kind of like Spangle Wheels, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I kind of like recumbents. It's all the same. Um, dude, thank you so much for joining me on the Dirt Shed Show this week. It's been awesome to have you as always. Thank you for having um, me. It's yeah, nice and uh, congratulations on your family news. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, can't wait for you to be here again soon. Yeah, for it's sure. Been awesome. um, see you soon. And thanks for watching out there, everyone. Yeah, nice one. Don't forget to love, like, and share on your social channels. Um, if you haven't subscribed yet, then what are you, kid? What are you doing? Get subscribing. Um, and, and, and until next time, uh, we will be seeing you. Make sure you give us some comments down below. Next Ta -ta. week.